Hey everyone, Michelle here with Retique It. I have this countertop here and I want to transform it into this gorgeous French oak finish and I'm going to show you how to do it. So stay tuned. Hey, so to get this French oak look, you're going to start out with the wooden primer. Next, you're going to grain the wooden stain in the barn wood. You're going to use these graining tools, the large and the small. Now for French oak, we do something special. We actually apply some of the water-based gel stain in whitewash. You're going to want your wonder brush and that's it. You're going to want to put a top coat on. That's the triple teak. Hi. So the first step you're going to do is make sure that your surface is squeaky clean. So because this is a countertop, you really want to make sure that all of the grease, all of the grime, any polishes, any wax or anything is off of it. So what I would recommend is to use equal parts denatured alcohol and water. Or you can use rubbing alcohol. The best option would be denatured alcohol, but if you can't find that in your state, I would say to use the rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on. And then next, I'm just gonna wipe it off. It's that simple. You wanna make sure when you wipe this off that there's no residue. So you want to take several paper towels or cloths. It's that easy. And now next, you can do a light sanding. Now you can use fine grit and just enough to scuff it up. This doesn't have to be much, but it'll just be enough to give it some tooth. It's really easy. You don't really need to do more than that. That's it. Now you might want to go back and just kind of wipe off the dust. And now your surface is ready for the next step. Now that your surface is clean, squeaky clean, you're going to take the wooden primer. Now this is a very light wood. It almost looks like the color of pine before it's stained. And I'm going to shake it up and take the lid off. Depending on the kit that you use, yours could be smaller. So you really only need one coat, but you could do more. You're going to take your wonder brush and just dip it in and apply long, even strokes. It's really easy. Now this first coat does not have to be pretty. This is just about laying down a base coat and giving it some grip. And if you notice, I just kind of smooth it out. And it's actually just with this one coat, it's covering up the underneath, which is amazing. Almost there. Now I'm going to actually use a blow dryer to speed up the process. But you don't have to at home. You could take little breaks, let it dry for an hour or two until it feels dry. You're going to want to make sure it feels dry.
Now you could actually apply this with a roller if you wanted to, but I like the way it looks with the brush strokes in the end. You could apply it with the roller and then still even it out with the brush strokes if you wanted to, to make it even faster. But for me, this works pretty efficiently. So long, even strokes. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I get this front part and the sides and we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so my wooden primer is now dry. I used a blow dryer to speed up the process, but you know what? It feels a little rough and sometimes you'll want to feel how smooth it feels and it should feel like a two by four or unstained wood. And if there's a little bit of speckles or roughness, you can take fine grit sandpaper or a fine grit sanding block and just lightly move it over the surface in the direction of the grain that you're gonna do. And just kind of knock those off and then dust it off really well. You can use a paper towel, just kind of smooth it out. And now your surface is going to be ready to grain. You're going to use the wooden stain and we're going to grain it while it's wet. So stay tuned for the next step. All right, so we're ready for the next step. We're going to use wooden stain and I'm going to do it in long sections like plank size sections. I'm going to go ahead and grain it while it's actually wet. So a lot of people are a little intimidated about this step, but it can be really easy. So I'm going to show you how. So go ahead and shake up your wooden stain. Take that lid off. And it's as simple as making sure you have a clean brush. You can use the Wonder Brush again. I rinse it off. I'm going to use starting out with the large graining tool. Okay? You're going to keep one nearby. I'm also going to have the little one nearby too. Sometimes I like to use this too, or you might just like this one. It just really depends on what you prefer. So go ahead, do a thin coat. I love the barn wood wooden stain. This is the barn wood. It's a nice kind of grayish. Has a little bit of gray, a little bit of the light brown. Beautiful. It's perfect for friendship. I'm just going to do a plank size section. This will be your first grain. Now don't worry if your first time graining doesn't turn out exactly right. You can go ahead and try a few more times. You really can't mess up. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my large graining tool and go ahead and start at the end and you're going to turn and roll as you keep moving. Do not stop moving. You want to keep the movement continuous and at some point you can kind of turn your thumb downward. I'm going to pull. Nice. So if I didn't like that, I actually do like this. I'm going to go ahead and try this again. I'm going to show you how a couple times you can do this before it gets dry. Nice. I'm going to go along the edge. I'm going to do the next part. I take a little bit, make sure there's no waste. Go ahead, dip it back in, and do the next section. Now you might be tempted to go ahead and do the whole thing, but it dries pretty quickly. You'll want to just do it in sections. It'll actually give it a really nice plank look too. So I think you'll like it. It looks really gorgeous with a French oak look. A little more. I 
remember the wooden stain actually has over 60% wood fibers in it too. I tell people it's like a gel stain that has wood fibers in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same big granny tool, but I'm gonna go this way, give it some variation. Yeah, you know, I don't really like that one area. I'm going to go kind of blend that out. Let's see here. Hmm. You can actually take your, your little, little one and do some grains too. Like that. You might like that grain more. It just depends on what you want. It's all up to you. Like I said, you can't make mistakes. Even if you did one that dried and you did it too many times and it dried into it, you can go ahead and put the wooden primer back over it, use a blow dryer, and go back with the wooden stain and try again. Because these are all water-based, it makes it really easy to correct any kind of mistakes. Now, that one's a little too thick. You need to make sure to wipe off your grain tool. I'm gonna do this a little thinner. Okay. Now I want this last one. I'm gonna fill this whole area in right here. Now you can see I'm by no means doing this perfectly. Just making sure that I apply it thinly and making sure that it stays wet. Wet enough to where I can still use the graining tool and pull it up. And when you use the graining tool, you actually do not have to pull it or you don't have to press down very hard. Just barely put any pressure. And I think a couple times of doing this, you'll get the hang of it. Right. Wipe that off there, any excess. And make sure, here we go. Oh, that one's a little too much for me. I'm gonna wipe that. Mm, want a little more? I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna brush that in a little bit. Let's try it on the other, the other direction. Make sure I don't have any excess. Hmm, I like that. It's pretty. I'm trying to pull that through and use the little one actually there. There really is no rhyme or reason to this. It's just going to be a matter of what you like. I'm gonna lift this up a little so you can see. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do these edges. Oh my goodness, it's looking so beautiful. It's looking just like French oak now already. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So let's go ahead and rinse out the brush and we're gonna get ready for the next step. So the wooden stain is all dry now and we have the beautiful grain put on it. And you know what, it actually feels like a plank of wood. And a lot of people ask me, can I just go ahead and put a top coat on this? And yes, actually, yes, you can. You can just go right ahead and put your top coat on, the triple T. But what I wanna do is create a French oak finish. So what you're gonna need to do is one more coat of the wood and stain in the barn wood or whatever color your wooden stain is. But for this one, for French oak, it would be barn wood. And what I'm gonna do is just apply one thin coat right over the grain. And I made sure my brush was clean. Just gonna go right over it. This is going to be a thin coat, 
It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to do it in little sections. Smooth it out. Long, even strokes. This just puts a little more color in it. So pretty. It always amazes me and it's so much fun to do this. The transformation is stunning. So now your kit may not be the French Oak Kit. It might be Java, or it may be Weathered Wood. And you'll just use whatever color your kit comes in for the wooden stain. And this will be the same color that you did the grain with. What's nice about French oak is there's a lot of variation in it. You're gonna have some areas that have a little bit of a whitewash gray, some that have a little more of the brown undertones coming through. Going very thin on this too. So if you wanted to, you could even do another coat. I really like it just with the one personally, but it just depends on the color that you want. it out and don't forget your edges all right so I'm gonna go around and do the front so I'm gonna do a little bit get the excess off there and just kind of pull it through Water base, move it out. Right, it's beautiful. Got this here. You want this to be completely dry, and then we're going to go ahead and do our whitewash gel stain. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply the water based gel stain in whitewash. Now this is what gives it that beautiful pickled oak look. 
It'll get some gray undertones. It's really beautiful. So you're going to apply this on and you can actually just uh, wipe it in some areas if you have a little too much. I just apply it with the brush. Now, with some of our kits, we don't have the water-based gel stain in it. This is an extra step that you would do for the French oak look. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and wipe some of it. Now some of these areas, I'm going to go ahead and wipe a little more, a little quicker, like this. And I'm using just a damp paper towel. You could use, you could actually use an old t-shirt or a sock as long as it doesn't have lint on it. And what's nice about pickled oak French oak, it has a beautiful grayish tone that comes through. And we'll show you some up close pictures of this. But in the beginning, just be very light with it. Remember, this is water based, so you can't mess up. It dries very fast. You could even kind of dust it on in some areas, just barely. Just take the excess on your brush and just kind of dust it in. And just keep wiping it. And if some of the areas have too much of the gel stain, you could always go back with some of your wind stain after this is dry and add a little touch more of the wood stain to give more of the golden and the brown undertones. All right, I'm gonna wipe that. So I'm going to go ahead on the front and do the edge, you don't want to forget that. Hey, so after you apply your water-based gel stain in the whitewash, you might have some areas that look a little too white and you're thinking, what do I do? So what you'll want to do is go ahead and get a little bit of your barn wood wooden stain. Okay, I'm going to dab it in here. I'm going to take any excess off and put it on this paper towel. Just kind of use that. You could also use like a paper plate, plastic plate, whatever. And what you're going to do is go into some of these areas and kind of dust it in. 
because there's too much white. Now you might like this, but I think I want to um, have a little more warmth coming through and just a little tiny bit of the pickled oak, the whitewash coming through. So I'm going to take a little bit of the excess and it's just barely any. So I just want to show you that you can do this. If you, if you ever feel like you had too much of the whitewash, you could go back in with your wooden stain and add more. You could even go back in later and add more of the whitewash if you want to at any time. And when you get it to the look that you finally want, then you can go ahead and put your top coat and triple teak on. And I think I have it just about how I like it. It's beautiful. It looks just like French oak and it actually feels just like it too. So um, stay tuned and we're gonna do the final touches, the matte finish triple teak to give it that extra protection. And now for your finishing touch, we're gonna use the triple teak top coat and this is actually in the matte finish. And this is gonna add that protection that you need. You're gonna to wanna to do a thin coat and you're gonna to wanna to do one thin coat every couple of hours. And what I would say is just use up whatever you have in your kit to give that extra protection. So you can go up to three, four, even five coats if you want to. But normally I recommend three coats if it's a countertop, two to three coats if it's a tabletop. And with triple teak, you don't have to go back too much. Don't overwork it. Just go in sections. I tell women it's like applying fingernail polish top coat. You don't want to overwork it or it'll start getting too sticky and uneven when it dries. It just actually makes it easier. You're just kind of applying it in sections and then you just walk away. that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. I'm going to go back three more times to do a very thin layer of the triple T top coat in matte finish. And then we'll show you how it turned out and how beautiful this French oak finish is. Thanks for watching.